Today I'm painting the goddess of fertility and pleasure. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I finally am. So we're back painting some Ankh gods. This is Hathor. She is the goddess of fertility and pleasure. And we're starting off with Primer Wolf Grey. And we're going to be painting some oozing purple on the inside part of her skirt. This is on the, uh, there's two parts to her skirt. This is the inner one. So I want to do this one first so that if I'm painting like the leg skin later on or anything else, I don't hit this purple or the inside of the dress. But technically, I ended up hitting it a little bit, I believe, and it would have been better, I think, to... Well, no, actually, I think it was better to paint the legs afterwards. Uh, now we're using a little bit of Xanathar Blue, a little bit. We're going to actually be using a lot. This is actually a D&D &D unique paint color from Army Painter. And um, this is for all the skin. So there's a lot of skin to cover on this big miniature. Uh, she got feet, hands, arms, chest, uh, thighs, everything you need to know about this. You got to paint everywhere. This is a beautiful light blue color. It's too bad that it's a D&D &D unique paint. It's hard to get if you run out of it. Uh, that's one thing with, uh, you know, one thing though I did notice, I, I was thinking about when I was painting this is that, you know, was, um, Army Painter did a lot of painting box sets for Simon. I think they did even Rising Sun. I think they did Kings of War. They should have done one for Ankh with a lot more unique colors, even some more different kinds of gold possibly. That would have been a really awesome idea. Anyways, Cold Slash now. This is another D&D unique paint. And this is just going to be for her face because she had a very pale uh, grayish blue face. And with the uh, wolf gray underneath, it does exactly what I wanted to do. Now we're painting the next part of her skirt with some ethereal specter. Again, another D and D unique paint. Uh, this is a very light purplish pink color. Uh, I made a mistake. This was actually supposed to be another blue color, but I left it like this because I found that blue would have meshed in too much with the skin. And I think this looked really nice having this light pink here because it also goes on these like drapes or whatever that she has on her arms. And this is just for one part of them because the uh, other drapes are gonna be painted in a different color. Now we're going to start off with the main part of the skirt, which is supposed to be a dark brown. So we're using some dark dirt spatter, some dark spatter, dirt spatter. Um, this is very, very opaque. You're going to want to put two layers of this and just brush it on like I'm doing there. I mean, yeah, you're going to see some of the brush strokes or whatever, but uh, try and keep it uniform. And you simply just go over it with a second coat and it's going to be turning out really nice, giving it a nice earthy tone to it. Uh, especially for these on gods who are in, uh, in the sandy deserts of Egypt. Uh, having this earth tone is really nice to them as well. Alright, we're moving on to some leather brown now. And this is going to be for those other like drapes or silks that she's wearing as well. And as you know, she has four arms, so uh, they all have to be, you know, adorned with beautiful silks. Uh, she is the uh, fertility goddess, so we got to know what... Uh, that she's uh, that's why she also has many breasts as well so that's uh, interesting she, she reminds me a bit of like Towerette as well uh, yeah so you just want to be careful too we're using that leather brown also and some straps on her legs uh, that wrap around because the other straps are gonna be a different color all right now we're moving on to some monster brown and this is just for her horns uh, very simple very nice light brown not too dark this could have been also really good for those silks and then do something different with the horns uh, because I found the leather brown and the dirt spatter were almost a little too close in color range after even with the wash uh, you do see a difference a bit because it is lighter but this monster brown would have probably been a lot better as those silks and I think it would have given it like almost like a clear look to them you know all right some brain matter beige and this is where we're gonna be using I gotta love that color brain matter beige I feel bad using this on a god uh, anyway so this is a very light beige almost white uh, color it's gonna go on the leftover straps uh, on her legs uh, again with the wash later on they're gonna pop a lot more it's gonna be a lot nicer when you do them and I'm hoping you're liking these videos guys hit that like button if you're new to the channel like 75% of you are hit that subscribe button we're well on our way to 500 which is gonna be amazing next we're doing her staff with some tanned flesh yes this is like an orangey brown color and I found this was perfect for a stick uh, the blue was coming down a little bit through it still, so you're going to have to put a couple layers of that. 
Uh, don't worry about really putting like a lot on your brush because there's no details here to hide really. It's flat surface, it's round, it's, it's boring, it's simple. There's nothing to worry about if you load your brush up with paint. Normally you don't want to do that because you don't want to cover up the um, uh, the details you know, with the paint and get rid of all that, especially if you have a, a primer, which I'm really bad at priming by the way. I sometimes overload. Anyways, that's a debate for another time. Orc skin is our next color for the snake that is wrapped around one of her scepters. Uh, this is, it's, it's not supposed to be shiny. It's not supposed to be a golden color or anything like that. Not metallic. It's supposed to look like really like the body of a serpent. So we're doing that with this beautiful orc skin color. And you know what? It is a beautiful green color. Very foresty, very earthy. Again, to match well with the theme of the gods in Egypt. All right, we're moving on to some evil chrome, and I like this color. I've been using it quite a bit on these Ankh gods, and these are for all her little bells. Now, if I remember correctly, bells signify, like, you know, the welcoming of new life, I think, so you rang the bells and all that, and so I'm guessing with being the goddess of fertility, having all these little bells around her is a good idea. Uh, well, not a good idea, but I mean, it's, it's like a... Anyways, there's some everywhere on her. Like, her whole legs are full of these little bells. And I didn't want to go gold because that would have really popped. I found that this evil chrome was, like, just this perfect amount of shine on those bells. Uh, but, however, we're not going to forego that greedy gold. It's going to show up again. And this is going to be for the rest, pretty much, of the armor and jewelry. She doesn't have much armor, actually, to be honest. She has, like, jewelry and adornments. Uh, she has, uh, like, bracelets, uh ankle bracelets too but i'm not even sure if i hit the ankle bracelets i might have forgot to do those little gems around the belt uh things like that so you just want to make sure you get that gold a little bit everywhere all right now that has some different hues of metallics we're gonna use some weapon bronze and this is actually gonna go on the tip of her spear as well as the tip of her cane, because she's holding a cane, a spear, these handcuffs. <laughs> and so there's people out there that seem to be real Egyptian uh, buffs that actually know what all these things are and seem to be uh, teaching me, which I love, by the way. It's actually gotten me back into my old college days when I used to uh, go into ancient history and learn about all the Egyptian stuff and uh, Romans and all that, and I loved it. So uh, just having this... Uh, weapon bronze is just a different like hue of metallics and i've used it before on a couple other miniatures and i really like it it's a really nice color it's not too dark it's got like a grainier look to it not great well more earthy again that earthy tone like i really want her you know she's the goddess of fertility or not yeah i think so uh you know very earthy you know you want her to be there anyways some evil chrome again because i forgot to do the bells under her neck um, I don't even know what kind of animal she is. She looks like an oxen or something, like a, like a, some sort of a cow or something. Like you know, anyways, oxen I think is a good idea. Glitter green. Now we're doing her arm braces. Uh, this is again a beautiful metallic color from Army Painter. By the way, if you notice, we've been using Army Painter on everything on this miniature. Uh, the only thing that's going to be not Army Painter is pretty much the base later on, which I do off camera. All right, we're moving on now to a little bit of zephyr pink. This is just for some uh, ornaments here and there. I find this meshes well with the purple of her robes and uh, brings out a little bit more color on the miniature as well. And then we're going to be using some gemstone now on those cobras that are wrapped around her neck. Those are actually in gold, not in green like the other snake, the other cobra that's on her staff. And as well as that nice red gem above her head. We're also going to hit a couple little gems here and there. Just to, you know, you can vary it all you want. Now, I had forgot to do this part at the bottom. So I'm using some centaur skin, some mummy robes, and some fairy dust. And I made a blend of all that so that all these little diamonds... I mean, I could have painted one by one different colors. Mm -hmm. I saw in some of the artwork that it was like one color for one, one color for another. And that would have... I, no, I didn't have the patience for that. Um, so now we're using some soft tone on the entirety of this miniature. I found it made it a little too earthy, too brown in all the colors, especially that beautiful blue. So what I did after and off cameras, I just took a few little dry brush strokes to all the paint colors again, uh, just to revive all those beautiful colors that were underneath. Sometimes the, soft, the, the, the tones from uh, Army Painter can go on a little thick, so be careful with that. You might want to put a, a wash medium in there or even just create your own. Or, you know, Null Oil, I live by Null Oil. It is amazing stuff. 
But I wanted, like I said, this one to be earthy. So I didn't want to get that brown. I just want it with soft. I could have went light. It may have been better. Well, there you have it, folks. Hathor is all painted, ready for the table. I hope you enjoyed the video, folks. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you all in the next one.